Hello Houston! This is Jason Hammond again, the ACE team manager from the Children's Museum Houston, here to now tell you about paleontology. And we're going to talk about paleontology in a different way than most people are used to. When most people hear the word paleontology, they think immediately of dinosaurs. And yes, dinosaurs are cool. Dinosaurs are important. I, in fact, right over my head right here, have a Triceratops dinosaur model that I cherish, that I got in Spain, actually. On one side, it shows like the internal organs and skeleton of said dino, and on the other side, it shows me what the skin looked like. So yes, I am one of those people who loves dinosaurs very, very much, uh, but I also want people to realize that there's more to paleontology than just dinosaurs, and that in fact, dinosaurs are a, a small part of paleontology. You know, we've been, we can study things 250 million years old or older, and dinosaurs weren't around then. So uh, they did stay on the earth for a long, long time, much longer than we've been on the earth, but they are just, again, a small part of what we would call paleontology. So I want to show you a different way of studying paleontology or a different way of how things got preserved when it comes to paleontology, because that's really what we focus on when it comes to paleontology is the preservation of living material through fossils and there's different ways things fossilize. Now, when we look at dinosaurs, we often look at the bones. Like you can see all these little bones here, okay? Uh, but we also have found from dinosaurs, we have found what we can thought, we, we think is skin, you know, preserved skin. We found dinosaur poop, it's great. We can learn about stuff from the dinosaur poop, what they ate and whatnot, and all kinds of different things. Uh, now, other things, like I said, get fossilized, where these things called trilobites that uh, are shelled creatures that get fossilized and we find their imprints or even like their kind of shell material within a rock formation or whatnot. Uh, but also, one thing that gets uh, fossilized are insects and the imprints of old plants. And this is really important because plants, just like animals, just like insects, evolve as well. So we have different insects from back in uh, you know the prehistoric times we have different plants back in those times so there's like a whole wealth of knowledge we can learn by studying all these different things now one thing that you have to understand as well is that there are pre there are paleontological fossils that were around when humans were around too okay we like we our cells aren't so much paleontological uh, fossils, but things that lived with us were like mastodons and mammoths and uh, tigers, uh, the, the uh, saber-toothed tigers and those short-faced uh, bears and all those kind of things. So there is evidence that there were people who hunted uh, mammoths and mastodons and whatnot, uh, but these are very, very ancient people, ancient societies. So. The mastodons didn't survive, the mammoths didn't survive, the short-faced bears didn't survive, the saber-toothed tigers didn't survive, but people did, okay? So, paleontology isn't something that's like really, really, really old. I mean, yeah, 10,000 years is old, but a lot of people only think of paleontology in millions of years, where it actually can be in thousands of years as well. So, we're gonna do like a little modeling of a way uh, two different things get fossilized. I'm just gonna put my triceratops over here. And the way we're gonna do it is we're actually going to fossilize how lots of insects got fossilized, and we're gonna show a fossilization model of how plants get fossilized. We're gonna start with the insect. So what you're gonna need are these sort of like souffle cups. Okay, so I'm gonna take one and put one right there. You're gonna need uh, clay. Okay, so we give you a big bag of clay you can use. All right, we're gonna need Top coat, and top coat uh, is what is used to put over paintings to keep them from like you know fading out or something like that. Uh, so when top coat dries, it dries kind of clear, so you can see what's inside. We're gonna make it look like amber though, so we're gonna add some yellow food coloring and some red food coloring. We're gonna need one of these one ounce cups. That's where we're gonna put the top coat in and the food coloring in we're gonna need a toothpick to mix the top coat. And we're gonna need an insect to preserve. So right here is my cricket or grasshopper. I don't know quite what it is, but that's what I'm gonna preserve. So that's what we're gonna to need to make this. 
So first thing is first is everyone's gonna need one of these souffle cups. Just set it down, open up your bag of clay, and everyone's gonna need a little bit of clay. And I'd say, maybe this much clay would do, okay? This actually might be a little bit too much. I'm gonna take a little bit off. And you're just gonna roll it in a ball, like this, and then you're gonna put this at the bottom of, yeah, actually this is a little too much even right here, so I'll put a little bit more back. So maybe a ball like this size, okay? And then you're gonna put this at the bottom of your souffle cup and you're gonna spread it out. Spread it out evenly throughout the bottom. So this amount of clay should be enough for 20 kids, easy. Probably even more. All right. So here's what happened. This little insect was, you know, flying around, hopping around, whatever it was doing, and it landed on a tree or something like that that had some resin on it or some sap. And this resin or sap can harden and preserve itself, and then we call it amber. So it probably stepped on some amber and it got stuck inside. So right now it's stuck. Okay, and it's like unhappy because it's stuck. It's like, dang it, I'm stuck, all right? Then what happens is because it's stuck on this amber, more amber flows over. And remember, like, amber's like this kind of like, it's almost like this like, um, it looks almost like honey that kind of comes out of a tree and can like, you know, flow over things. It's got pretty high viscosity. It's pretty um, thick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and emulate this uh, amber by creating some of our own. So we're gonna take our top coat and we're gonna fill up the one ounce cup almost to the top. You don't have to go quite to the top, like this, okay? And be sure to close everything up because if you drop anything here, it's gonna make a mess. And then you're gonna take your, sorry, I dropped my toothpick. You're gonna take your red food coloring and you're gonna put about a drop of that in there All right, and then you're gonna take your yellow food coloring, and uh, maybe put two drops of yellow food coloring in. All right, and then you mix it with the toothpick. You mix it with the toothpick. And let me get a toothpick out. All right, here we go. And you mix it up. So it's gonna be this reddish yellow color. This is not quite the color of amber, but it's close enough. And you can see how it changed the color here. Well, let me mix it up a little bit more and you can see I have kind of big fingers. Now, even though it becomes this reddish yellowish color, it still will dry a little bit clear so you can see what's inside, okay? And that's the one thing, you don't necessarily wanna cover the insect entirely so you can see a little bit of it, um, just in case it doesn't, uh, if you get a little too much um, food, col or, uh, yeah, food coloring in, just in case you can still see it a little bit. So this is what it looks like. I should mix it a little bit more because the bottom is still a little white. That should do it, that's good. All right, so like this, okay? And then very simple, like I said, you just kind of pour it around and over the insect. Like I said, I always like to keep a little bit of the insect uh, sticking out so you can see what's inside. But you know, if someone wants to put the whole thing in, that is fine as well. Or cover the whole thing up, that is fine as well. And then it's gonna look like, it's gonna be hard for me to do that without covering them, but you can see how I, I covered it up with the top coat. On the top, the insect's head is sticking out. It's just hard to see. Like, yeah, right there, you can see it a little bit. It's sticking out a little bit. Okay, and then you just leave it for a while. You can, you don't have to, we give you lids, but you don't have to put the lid on. Actually, it'll dry better without the lid on, okay? So just put it somewhere for, I don't know, if you do this like in the morning, do it for a couple hours somewhere. If you do it in the afternoon, just leave it till you, the kids are being picked up, then give them a top so that they don't spill it everywhere when they get home. 
and then they, when they get home, just remind them to take the top off so that they can um, uh, let it dry quicker. Like I said, they should dry, not exactly clear because we put the um, food coloring in, but it should dry so that it's like, it, it's like a coating on top of it. And then they can do fun things like they could crack it out. They can be like, hey, look, mom, dad, I can crack this out. So I'm gonna be a real paleontologist right now and pull out the insect and show them and clean it and do everything that a paleontologist does. Okay? So that's how you would do the insect. The uh, plant fossil is much easier because really what it is is a plant imprint. So you're really only gonna need is a skewer and you're gonna need some of this uh, air dried clay. And we give you this, oh, look, I spilled a little bit of um, uh, top coat on here. We give you this uh, template here where you can see how different plants have left their imprints on rocks. Like they've you know, fallen on probably like cooling rocks. The organic matter died away and they left this imprint. So really what they're gonna do is they're gonna make an imprint. So again, give them, I don't know, a good size amount of air dry clay, you know, something like this, and have them kind of smooth it out, smoosh it out to like a good circle or square shape or whatever shape they want. Don't make it too thin though, because you know, again, you wanna be able to carve something out of it so, you know, make something like that. And then using the uh, skewer, you can either look at the examples we have and they can make something like the example, or they can make something of their own, but they wanna make it, you wanna make it look very plant-like. You just wanna carve it out. And they can carve out all the little bits and pieces out, like, you know, get the, little the little uh, after the car the little bits that come out they can get that out they can smooth it out they can make sure that they give the leaves like their veins like the little veins you see they're not really veins but that's what they look like and you know you can create something like this and then once it dries you can really pick all the bits out and it'll look like one of these and we also give you markers and stuff so you can actually color those pits in. You can color them like, like you can see, these have colors in them. You can put those colors in as well, okay? So those are the um, different ways you can do this and show that the fossilization is just, not just dinosaur bones, it's all kinds of things. So that is the paleontology lesson. And again, the, the really one of the big things that you want kids to get out of this lesson is what paleontology is. And what it is really is the study of um, extinct uh, or living organisms. Don't just say animals, extinct living organisms is best. And we study these extinct living organisms through the fossils they left behind. And one thing that's important too about paleontology is um, they work with different scientists. They work with geologists, people who study rocks, okay? They might work even with um, other uh, scientists like anthropologists, you know, people who study culture because they might actually be interested in what did a woolly mammoth provide for this society of humans? Why did they hunt them? And so they can show them what they were, what was made from the woolly mammoth's bones or tusks or things like that. So, you know, you can get in all kinds of disciplines that are interworking together. So it's really, really interesting stuff. All right. Uh, if you want to do more science activities, we do have on our website some uh, activities you can look at. We have science and math, uh, all kinds of stuff. So you can look on there, see what we got. If you have the supplies for that, go ahead and do them. That's great, you know. Um, but right now, you know, do this. It's a lot of fun. The kids will enjoy it. It's two things they get to take home with them. Uh, they can show their family when they get home, like, look what I did today. It's really good stuff. And then, like I said, they can continue this practice by once the um, top coat dries, they can go ahead and crack the insect out, you know? And then they, you know, if they wanna re-preserve it, they can ask their parents for nail polish. Nail polish will work too, as long as it's clear. Make sure it's clear nail polish. So they can ask them for that and they can re-preserve it. So there's lots of extensions that can be done with this one as well. So anyways, thank you for joining me at my home. Normally I would be out and about doing outreach, like teaching you this stuff like in front of you. But right now, stay at home, so I'm staying at home as well, and I'm doing what I can to serve the community from my house. So here's this video. Hope you enjoy it, hope you enjoy the lesson, and hope we can give you some more later on down the road. Thanks a lot for everything, I'll talk to you later. This is Jason saying goodbye.